following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this December the 21st uh, session. Dow's down 17 at 19,957. S&P is down 3 at 2267. <clears throat> Comp index is down 16 at 5487. The VIX is down at 11.27. It's down 18 cents. <clears throat> We're watching the VIX very closely. In fact, we have a little position now in the VIX uh, because I think we're getting real close. This is more of an experiment, uh, just a test of a very small position. We'll see what happens. I still think that uh, there's, a, there's a possible test of the exact 20,000 level that will be either underneath it, like 19,990s, or just above 20,020s, something like that. And then I think we have to be a little bit careful. I'll explain the reasons why, etc. What I'm not sure if I men mentioned this uh, last week. I thought I did, but maybe I didn't. I know last night in my second webinar, I was going to talk about it, but there was just so much to discuss that I think I, I forgot about. It. What I wanted to say is, if memory serves me, and in fact, I'll do it. Let me just run all the numbers that I'm going to do it now, and I better just either write it down or remind myself to come back to it. And I'll put... Uh, 20,000, then I'll put 10,000. Okay, we're going to look at the long-term charts. And now my, if memory serves me correctly, <clears throat> when, the, when the Dow spikes right through a very important millennial level, it either has a stalling motion that stops beforehand, and that can take quite a while before it actually powers through or else it just slices through. And what I, what I did say to uh, subscribers this morning to my opening call is that there'll be a change in the scenario short term if at any point in the next three to five sessions there is a spike to 22,120, 22,150. You get up into that area where you're now comfortably into the 20,000s, and then we're done. And then you can pull back you know, anything you want. The, the number now is in the 20,000s. At this point, it is the goal of the 20,000, 20,000 target. Um, but just going there and coming back says, you know what, we could take a little while while we rebuild energy before we cross this very important line. Why do I say it's an important line? This I have discussed. Is because it's very important psychologically. I can't believe how many people over the last week and a half have looked at me and just shake. Just these are people that are either kind of in the market because they're obliged to be in the market due to whatever funds it is that they are, are purchasing, regardless of what happens to the market, or people that um, have just been really reluctant to be in the market. And maybe have a little bit of money in the market, and that's in the general stock market, in funds or whatever it is. But basically, have been thinking that it is just impossible. This is ridiculous. There's just no way that the market should be here. At least three, four, five people have gone to and looked at me and said, "This market," and then they shake their head. Uh, one person, in fact, who we we only saw, talk about the market every few years. We're always in contact, but we talk about other things. Um, Say to me last night, I'm making, there's a person who's retired. I'm making so much money, we could even have a 50% decline in all my port, in every portfolio I have, and I'd still not know how to spend the money. I don't know. I don't know what he's been doing all this time. That's fantastic. Um, so, this year has been very kind to him. And um, this is, I mean, never, we, you know, it's not like we talk the market or anything like that, or if he's even going to listen to anything I say. It's just stuff that he's done over the years. And this is it. So I, this is why I'm saying the 20,000s 
once we're in the 20,000s, a lot of people that have missed this huge move are going to say, oh, hey, missed the huge move because they haven't had any stocks on the long side, are going to say, wow, I, I think I've missed something and my bond portfolio is down and uh, uh, all of a sudden they're going to be very interested in the stock market. That's what's important about 20,000. It's not the number, it is the implications of the number. All right, let's get to the nitty gritties. E mini down 275, testing the all time highs. Um, it's made a kind of a rectangle formation. The Dow Diamonds did that. Sorry, the Dow 120 minutes did that um, right here. And they've got the pattern that I showed last night. It's like the upside down, it's a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. If you're looking at it upside down, that's kind of what we're looking at. So I think there's enough room here to go a little higher. Um, in this particular pattern, but it is starting to get uh, somewhat toppy on the shorter term. All right, let's get to the nitty gritties here. You've got uh, the QQQ series right now. The QQQ is down 30 cents at 120.25. Uh, here again, I think that there's a lot of strain and stress in the NASDAQ. I think because of Amazon, and I've spoken about that before, Amazon is really struggling at this particular point. It's way off the high, the all-time high in the eight, uh, 847, what was that? 847.21 back in the week of October the 7th. 847.21, let me type that in. 8, 847.21. Um, hmm, this is the time that we get all those calls from... Uh, for donations. There's one just going right now. Okay, so um, Amazon is saying in the RTH, I mentioned that this morning, RTH index is the, the, the retail. I, I, I'm really, I might be totally wrong about this, but I think there's a lot of sales, a lot of in-store sales. That's the brick and mortar, brick and mortar sales. But I think the profits are going to be stretched, and that's what the market seems to be saying right here. And that's what Amazon is saying. And that's what Federal Express is actually saying. Other than they actually had expenses that were due to uh, the ability to um, expand and use their resources to be able to create a better Federal Express. Um, so I'm not sure it's directly related to sales, but I think quite a bit of it could be sales. Uh, I think there are a lot of packages, millions of small little items that they're shipping. The big items, uh, maybe those. that's what's slowing things down. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty of, of the IWM. Still waiting for that elusive leg D. Um, it's at 137.29, down 67 cents. It only has to go to 138.82. It's surely not a big deal. That's what I'm anticipating. When we get that, I'm going to start looking more at the short side of the market. Uh, let's go on. We're going to go to gold. What's gold doing? It was down before. Down just uh, 0.70 at 11.32. This is a pattern that says to me, in the next five sessions, five trading sessions, going to the end of the year, let's call it to the very first two trading days of January. This is where I think we're going to be looking to see what does the dollar do? Uh, it's making a p potential peak D here, but the stochastic still at 86%, and the, the um, bank D is still quite good. And the, the weekly chart is suggesting it's getting a little toppy here. And that says to me that we might, and I mentioned to my subscribers about our four um, our four symbols, Vixie, Dolly, Bondi, and Goldie. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, there's a chance that we get a little bit of a bounce coming up, and I think it would be called a bounce, not a big move up, but a bounce in, the, in yields. I'll be... Uh, it Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. We're back. I had a question about Twilio, T W L O. Um, and I said that maybe Twilio, as the cloud communications, is a benefit of the environment right now. Um, it hasn't been very good. It was an IPO back in um, earlier this year. Uh, in the in the t under 25, and then it screened up to over 70, and then it came back down to about 20, 29, uh, 28 and a half, um, and now it's at 31 and uh, 0.44. I, I said that you know based on this 120 minute chart, it hit the 200 period moving average, which is usually a repellent zone, but it held the nine period moving average. So my answer to S and P in the den was, if you're long, that's great. I would put a stop. I said on part of the position. At about 30.40, at uh, about 80 cents lower. But what's really important is that if you aren't in it, I'd even say you could nibble here, just a small position, not nibble, just a small position. And you need a few days because you want to see. And this one, I would have a fairly tight stop because if it breaks under 30.91, uh, there's a chance that it might not bounce quick enough. But if you're already in, that's okay. You can make the stop a little bit wider. Um, so that's what I'm saying. And this would just be the start because it's come down sharply, but it's held above the previous, the all-time the all -time low. This is kind of important. <clears throat> so I treat it only as a trade. It hasn't shown me real signs of strength yet in the weekly. The daily is showing some kind of strength, but it tends to ignore that strength. So I, went, I want the weekly to make this W formation in the stochastic, and I want to see it's a 31-32. Boy, if by the end of... But by Wednesday to Thursday of next week, if we could be at the 3430s, that'll be the first sign that says, hey, this is maybe a first quarter of 2017 type stock for a nice uh, rally. But let's just deal with it one step at a time. So what I was looking at before was the TLT. And the TLT is at 117.95. And the reason why I put the TLT gold um, trading uh, at 1133.70 uh, what did I say? Vixie, the vol volatility index, which made a, a low at a, a leg D today, and that low is at about 11. Uh, let me just check it out. I want to give you a number that's wrong. The low so far is 11.49. I suspect that between 11.55 and 11.20ish, just above 11 itself. I think we will make some kind of a low that's a tradable low in the VIX if what I'm looking at pans out. Uh, we'll see what happens. And um, 
Dolly. And we looked at the dollar. The dollar is pulling back from a, a, a leg D yesterday to a recovery high of 103.65. Let me type that in so I don't have to keep doing that. 103.65. And, uh, but that weekly chart, this candle is going to be very important. What happens with this candle? So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the weekly uh, technicals are very strong. <clears throat> The daily, the 120-minute chart has pulled back very sharply in an arch formation. I would be surprised if it just gives up the ghost and the sauce to move quickly down to the 100.90 to 99 level over the next two weeks from this level without one more attempt at a high. I think it's going to try at least one more, and that to me is going to be critical. That's going to be a test of the market, a test of the dollar strength, the test of the gold, the other the other uh, three uh, symbols that we look at, the uh, Vixi, Dolly, and Goldie, and that that's really what I'm looking at. So I think I to to me we are very close to some kind of a shorter term consolidation. Even if you look at the XLF, now why did I type it there? I should type it right there in the symbol box. XLF, peak D, kind of working its way sideways. Yes, if you want to be strict, this is. So far, looking very much like a, an oval pattern for the Chapman Wave Stork Lake Formation, which says you could still get a spike to the upside. I don't want any position on the short side yet in the XLF, but I'm not afraid that on a short-term basis you could have they've had spectacular moves. So that means you could give back 12 to 18 percent on some of the stocks when there's some kind of a pullback, and that pullback says. On a trade at trading level, a short-term trade, yes, you can go short, but be careful shorting the very best index in the in the market. Um, and leg C, well, we can't go with the XLF because it got reconfigured, but we can go with the BKX, which has almost the same pattern. Not quite. This is more. This is close to the Dow pattern. You see, what's interesting is the BKX is a leading index, but the Dow is also the leading index in, in the market. Um, so this is the BKX is like a leading sector index, and the Dow is the leading index of the market, even though it's only 30 stocks. I love the makeup of it. I've discussed it for a long time. <clears throat> it's looking very good. Chapman Wave Stork Lake Formation, I don't even want to get into it. I just keep showing it. We haven't got any signs yet of the neck making it top. And even then, will it be the top? Uh, I don't think so. I think there's more to go in the month in, in the first three months of uh, 2017. So now what I said is let's look at this and let's see if I can do that. I'm going to squeeze this closed. And I want to look at the levels. So 10,000, let's just put a nice thick line right across 10,000 right there. Oh, am I taking calls? Yes. Oh, Ben, I'm so sorry. I kept meaning to look down. Ben and, and this will cover the same thing. Ben and Tallahassee, if you're still there, and I'm sorry to have had you on hold. How are you? Good, Ben. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So yeah, your question. Yeah, a few minutes here, but um, so it, it 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 could turn into a, a lengthy question, but but um, I, the. Um, Question is well. First of all, the comment is great job on 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 you know telling us that there should be an LU wave five on the way up. Um, you know that was a great call last whenever that was last uh, spring or summer. Yes, thank um, you. Now, uh, you know my my next big question and probably several other people want to know as well is your thoughts on after. I guess we're 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 in the heart of this. Uh, uh, you call Coda phase. And Elliott Wave Five. Do you, do you then see after that the the you know the twenty percent drop, or what? What are your thoughts on uh, you know what happens after this I, Elliott Wave Five? I have to take two things into consideration. One is that the optimism and the reality of a new president has to um, there has to be a, a um, the. Reality and the, um, what we can't even call them the wish or we can't call them, and the positive thoughts of those in the market um, are going to come to, uh, a, to a collision at some point because not everything is going to be done even in a year's time. And in fact, with, this, with the Congress, the way the mix is, 
we might find that there are a whole bunch of initiatives that are just like day one, bam, 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 bam. And then the market has to sort out and say, hey, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. These are expensive or these are not expensive or this area hasn't been discussed before. So that's when I think we start to get some kind of a, a consolidation in the market. How that consolidation takes place, I'm basing it on my Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. And the stalk leg says, when it's completed, it tends to go to the, um, the, the top of the oval pattern, which is 18,351, which is no big deal. It's only uh, 1,500 points away. But if it, if it holds very well and consolidates sideways, this can extend. So all I'm going to say to you is we are in that coda phase. I have to make a decision whether the coda phase, which I said is going to be in two parts, has a major second part to it, which can last way more than a year, a year or two or three. I, I don't really want to get into that now. So I'll talk about platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The holiday season is here, and TFNN Salvation Army Tiger Dollar Special is back right now. You can get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and 10% of whatever you spend will be donated in your name to the Salvation Army. The sale only comes around once a year, so don't miss out. Tiger Dollars are a great way to add extra savings to TFNN newsletters or services, and they never expire. Get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Thursday, December 22nd, and get your 25% bonus while donating. 10% of your purchase to the Salvation Army. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So this is what I've got. I, I, I'll go back to that chart that I had before with the Dow 10,000. Uh, ben, uh, ben had to go. I'm going to continue that thought process because for me, it is a process. I could very easily say, hey, um, in Elliott Way 5, uh, code of formation that I've been talking about for so long, blah, 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 blah. I, that doesn't mean a thing to me. I have to do the assessment in relation to trend lines that have been broken, expansions that, uh, that occur, left side, right side, price, time match, a whole bunch of things. And I really need the monthly chart to conclude in December. And I really would prefer to have January's uh, uh, candle in place so that I can start 
giving an assessment for because the Dow is only is in leg D, but the S&P, as you can see right here in this black background chart, is only in leg C. It says to me that we will not get a major top until we get that D in the S&P, and that should be in 2017. That would probably, I shouldn't say it will definitely, but it could make the Dow already a leg E, but sometimes they just come together. It'll be a peak C in the uh, uh, S&P, and then for whatever reason, over a three-month period, they just kind of come together so that they could land up being in parallel motion. I prefer that. It makes it a lot easier. However, what's really important about this, you see this trend line, this red dash trend line that I'd shown uh, recently? Uh, I said, if we break above it, that's okay. If we decisively close above it, what it's done is, is it's treated this, and I can then take another inside track right there, like there, and say, now I can say, with not absolute conviction, but I can say with a lot more authority, that this whole area of 2213 to this green trend line of 2183 should be the support. If it comes from here, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, 2240, we're talking about maybe a, a 20, let's call it a possible let me get the numbers. I don't want to just make up something. So 22 right now, we're at 22.68, and we've got the support level of 22.09. So that's a 68 points down to the 21, let's call it 80 area. So that's, um, all right, 60 to 80 points. Well, 60 to 80 points to the downside uh, would give you more, so that would give you, a, you know, a good 20% correction. How can that be? Is that, am I, am I correct here? Yeah, 22, 10% would be 22, 44 would be 20. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it would be quite a, quite a bit of a pullback, but it's all within the context of an up move. So I don't want to get too carried away, but I can say that the higher that this leg goes in December, then the more I'm able to raise the support level because it's peaks, it'll be peak C. That's really what I'm saying. So I don't want to get too carried away. There are tons of charts. You know me, I've got charts all over the show. Yeah, look at this. Yes, yeah, down monthly. There's a different perspective. This is the Chapman Wave Stalk Lake Formation. Um, because of the massive single leg that we can talk about, I'm not talking about peaks, I'm just talking about this, the huge leg that started in 2009 with this tiny little retracement to create the body. This says that the move to the upside can actually expand, we're not even a one-to-one -to, -one to the, <clears throat> to even the low that was made at this candle in November of 2012 at 12,471, at 7,000 points. So, um, all I can say is, as long as this is moving, it's in the right direction. I do believe we're going to get a shorter term pullback, but so many people have missed this move. It's going to create tremendous support. This is the exact opposite of shorting against uh, a stock that has a huge short inventory that are in, in other short positions. So there you are. Let's go to Bill in Orlando. Bill, how are you? Good. Yourself? I'm very well, thank you. Hey, um, I'm looking to get into FCX. It's had a nice pullback here. Yes, it has. One of the things I, I've been looking, I've been getting uh, uh, emails and, and calls and uh, about uh, the copper stocks and FCX folks is Freeport McMoran. And um, one of the things that I've been looking at here is if you look at the HG, the copper index itself, um, it's also exactly, it looks very much like FCX. It's had a, a pretty good pr correction from the 273-ish area down to 250, 245, uh, no, 247. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying from the weekly chart, the severity of the pullback is really what's tipping me off to say there's a chance that it's suggesting that there will be some kind of a market pullback a little sooner than everyone's thinking, but it won't be as serious as the bears would like, but it'll also scare the bulls because we haven't broken and held into the 20,000s in the Dow. So I'm just going to suggest to you, you watch this closely, right? Yes. 
So I, I'm going to suggest that you probably <clears throat> have a much better feeling, and I don't mean a, a visual or a, um, you have a visceral contact with it because you know when you've either missed it or you've got it, you know when you've succeeded, you know when you've missed it. I'm going to, stand to suggest to you that I would not be buying it right now. Okay. However, there's a chance within the next two days, I'm going to get a lot of signals that are going to tell me about bonds and the volatility index and gold and the dollar. And I'm just going to say to you <clears throat> that the severity of this peak D uh, uh, alternate counter. Why did I do that? That's not a D. I'm sorry. I mislabeled that. That was a failure pattern. This is an E. I meant to put an E over there in the top that was just made in the weekly chart tells me that I need a little more time not so much price so I'm going to make the two suggestions to you the first is because at 14.15 FCX unchanged right now might be making some kind of because it's it's holding the left side lows that, that are from uh, mid-November when it started the, the last takeoff okay I don't really want to say to you, you could nibble, just start a little position right now at 14.15. Um, that's probably what I should say, but I, the weekly chart says it's just, it needs a little more time, not so much price. And I'm just going to suggest to you that if it pulls back, no, if it breaks to the upside and it goes to 14.50, then I'm going to suggest just take a very small position because, yes, that might be starting the next bounce to the upside. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it right now. I just want to sign that it's going to cross the nine-period moving average, which it's failed to do for six or seven sessions already. Okay. I would prefer to see it make a little H pattern. That means it starts to slip to 1384. And then it can take out the low of 1326, but I want to see it close above that. That's so what I was I, wondering, if it could get back in that 1326 range again. Right, and I wouldn't, and I wouldn't treat these gaps as anything important. Copper stocks, they gap because they trade overseas. So I'm just going to say to you, um, and a question in the den, um, I had there's an a oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I had a question in the den, which now I can see because I had one letter that was being covered. I had an A, and that should have been an E slash B. Okay, so that changes a little bit my my look at the copper uh, at, at FCX. Let me write. I want to type this in so that it's real clear. I don't want to be fuzzy about this. There is a, it's still too deep. The pullback has been a little too deep, but I am saying I could be wrong because it's in it. There might be residual energy that says that if it goes to the 40, about 40. Hey, can you hold on a little second? I don't want to, I don't want to rush through this. Can yes, you hold I can. on? Yeah. Okay. We've got Bull in Orlando. We're looking at FCX. I want to look at it in relation to some of the other copper stocks during the break, and then I'll come back and I'll give it a different assess. Maybe the same with. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hello, folks. We're back. We've got Bill in Orlando looking at FCX. I also did the JJC, which is the IPATH Bloomberg Corporation. Oh, uh, Bloomberg Copper um, Trust. ETN. <clears throat> That's not holding all that well. It looks to me like it's going to be pulling back. You know, <clears throat> I think copper has been telling us that something very good has been going on. And now I think copper is about to tell us that um, <clears throat> there's some kind of a consolidation. So I could be completely wrong. Someone in the den just mentioned, uh, let's see, where, where did it go? That FCX, Terry said, FCX is one of IBD's top rated stocks for what it's worth. Yeah, I think it, 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 it how can I put this? Um, the monthly chart has improved enough that I do like it, but the month is not finished because if it closes under 2043, then I'm going to have a different opinion. So I'm just going to say to you, I would prefer to stick with what I said before, Bill, that, okay. um, yeah, if as a, as a stock that you want to hold, buy and hold, if you want to just nibble on it and here and just have it so you can be watching it even closer, uh, you know, just a small, you know, small number of shares just to have on your ticker, that's fine. I'm just going to suggest to you, I want to see how it holds that whole area, that, that low of uh, three days ago, the 1326 level. i got a feeling it's just going to pull back a little more, and then it starts to get into an area where I think there is tremendous support. So fussing over a dollar, well, it is a $14.17 stock, so a dollar is already 8%. So I'm, I'm thinking I, I'd prefer to hold off. I am wrong if it bounces to the 1450 area and it actually starts to hold there, then, then maybe it's starting to have the move already. And then I'll say, that's where you can start a small position. I still would keep it small. I think that it's had a huge move. It needs a little time to digest it. I hope I, I, I'm helping you. And we'll yeah. look at it again uh, next week. But I think it needs another week of consolidation. OK, thank you, Bill. Thank you very much for calling. Bill and Orlando, I appreciate that. So now let's look at this. I, I said that I'd look at the Dow, the longer term. So let's just go to the monthly. I'm going to put INDU. There it is. So the Dow, there's that big red line. <clears throat> so when the Dow, first of all, <clears throat> move it back, 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 back. I'll just do this slowly. Here we go. There's that red line. We, we, we used to go above it uh, uh, to the 1100 area. And then, sorry, 11,497, the high of January 2000, and then kaplop. So let me see. Let me squeeze it now. I think that was it. Let me just go back a little bit. Oh, it's disappeared. Yeah, that was it. I should remember it so well. I mean, I, I was looking at every single hour of the day. But you know how it is. Okay, so back in, it broke on April of 1999. It broke above 10,000. <clears> It had stalled just before that in July at 94,112 and then pulled back to the 80, to the 7370 area. And then it just went right through. But then it took all that time to create 
a table with lower highs and lower lows at a peak E in the Chapman wave. And then in March of that year, it, so well, this is a Dow. Dow made that top in January, and it went sideways, but it really broke down September of uh, 2001. And then it ran down to the low of October 2002. And then it went up and it went right through it again, and then it treated it as a um, like a 200-period moving average that it touches it, it tags it, goes a little above, and then it has to do the the yo-yo sine wave move over and under and over and under and over. And then all of a sudden, it used it as a base, and it took off in 2004, 5, 6, 7, and then we made that top of two, October of 2008, and then it went right through it. But if you recall, when we came back in November of 2009, it went right through it, treated as support, went above, and it went down, went to 11,258, and then it went under it for the final time, and then that it hasn't been there since it at 10,404 uh, back in October 2011. Uh, it didn't even touch it, and it uh, broke. Now I might be wrong, but I think <clears throat> that was when we bought the Dow, the Dow Diamonds, at uh, 65, 65.50 or something. On the on the Monday on the Friday of the exact low, and I think we just got stopped out by like 20 cents or something right there in October of 2011, if memory serves me correct. And then I had a scurry to get back in, and we've only been in a couple of times. We've used other indices like the like GE and others, UTX to 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 get the move up, but we've periodically got the move up, but mostly. Um, it's just been a buy and hold. If 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 you were holding it, you didn't have to do anything, and then probably you would have been stopped out in that big move down from the uh, th from the 18,351 May high of last year. Uh, probably I'm saying because that was a pretty deep correction for this market in time. So now what we're looking at is the question of the Basel. We are on the third restart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average on the monthly. Is this the end, or have you ever seen? Four restarts, in other words, four buy modes. That's really what he's saying. <clears throat> no, I've never seen four buy modes, um, but I need to double check. I've got my monthly charts, etc. I will check over the coming week. Um, I uh, no, when I say yes, I sure I've, I've seen four buy modes, but I've never seen four four buy modes without a fifty percent correction, like the one that we've just seen. Uh, that we saw from 2007. So that answers that. Um, but I'll go back and check. Not the issue. The issue, if it's a culminating move, it means that all records just get taken out. And all records implies that we don't know. That maybe you can do, uh, uh, you can use other techniques and you can get a price time match. <clears throat> But there's nobody here that definitely knows where this thing's going to end on the upside. <clears throat> the irony is that it might go so high that when it goes to a major top and comes down, the exact level we're talking about right now, 19,957, that might turn out to be support. You never know. So um, I, I just don't want to speculate. I know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the the internals getting stronger and stronger in the monthly chart. And at this point, that's all I can say. And uh, if you look at the IWM uh, monthly chart, this is IWM. This is only leg B. I really can't count it as anything else. There's no other way I can count it. It's leg B. It's very positive looking out. If I look at the IWB, this is the I shares, the Russell, it's in C. If I look at the MDY, it's in leg C, the mid cap. This is very interesting. Look at the daily. It's only made a peak B. At an all-time high, it should go to C and D. That's the reason why I don't want to get overly bearish right now. I'd rather just tiptoe in different positions. I'd rather still be looking at what's working and treat it as... Uh, a mixed market right at this particular point. When you get into some kind of a top emotion, some stocks like a Federal Express can uh, can drop sharply, but it doesn't mean like UPS has a slightly different pattern. It's made a peak F as well, but um, 
yeah, it's, look, it's, it's holding up quite nicely in the H pattern. So maybe just for now, it doesn't have quite the same problems. So you don't want to get too carried away. And the IYT, uh, question about the IYT, has made a peak F and it's pulling back longest in price and time uh, pullback it's had since the peak, uh, uh, since it began the buy mode in the daily. But the week is a D. I've got to be a little careful with it. I'll be back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to Trade Options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. Next on TFNN. Uh, folks, so we're looking at Nike, which had uh, some kind of result yesterday. The result uh, saw a spike after hours of about plus three, even more, and then pulled back. Now it's down eight cents at 51.72. Nike just looks terrible. I discussed this uh, over a year ago. No, it was about a year ago. I said, I think I, uh, Nike has made a peak F top at 68.19, December of 2015. Um, I said, this is a top of consequence monthly. Um, it's, it doesn't look very good. And it's pulled back from that 68 level to a low just uh, recently of 49. Now it's trading at 53. I think that Nike's uh, got a problem. And I don't see all that much on the upside. I see lower highs and lower lows for, for Nike. Federal Express, we just did. Uh, question about EW Hong Kong. I don't know if I've updated it up EWH. <clears throat> oh, man, how many times am I supposed to do these things? I keep losing it. So A, B, C, D, E, F made a G top in the, in the weekly chart. It doesn't look good. It just does not look good. Remember FXI, I said the other day, FXI, I, I don't see anything on the upside, lower lows and lower highs. 
At some point, it'll try to form a base, but I have to wait. It's at 35.21, 35.21 down two cents. I think it needs to test maybe the 34 to 33 area before I can get a sense of any bounce. Uh, EEM, same thing. Yeah, I'm just covering some questions that I got you. H formation, uh, I'm going to call that a down arrow. <clears throat> it's a problem. EEM. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, question I got about. Uh, for, 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 uh, do you have a time match for the spy correction uh, that uh, January of 2017? January, well, it's 25th, 17 to 2 17, 17. You know what? I'm working on this. And that's a good point that I think that as the Donald Trump comes in, that's where the market becomes a little more vulnerable. What can you do? What are you going to do? Et cetera. All those questions have come about. So I'm kind of preparing it. I haven't had time. I've been preparing my webinar to cover as many things as I could. So let's just say that I'm working on it. I'll discuss it more. I'll show all the, the temporary results. I'll show it to subscribers, and we'll talk about it here as well. But meantime, I'm watching the IYT, which is the transportation iShares. Pulled back, gone sideways, but it's that peak D that I'm watching real closely, even though the technicals are pretty good. And it's spiked a new high in the monthly chart. I'm calling it B. I can't really call it anything else at this point. So there are a lot of positives that are going on here. The sector rotation is going to be really important. My thinking is that we're getting real close to where the best over the last month are going to have a time out. And we're going to be looking at other sectors. The real big question will be, will you see gold? Will you see yields? start to rise. I have a, a template here that I'm looking at, not a template, I'm looking at the charts of my triple yield chart. I'm going to be discussing that as, as the week concludes. My thinking here is <clears throat> that we could still go to a leg F in the weekly chart. That'll make leg D in the 10-year yield and the five-year yield. And then I think yields start to come down. And that's where I think we see gold and yields uh, come down. Gold goes up, yields come down. TLT starts to rally, bonds start to rally. The VIX um, could have a bounce, but it will be just a bounce. And the other thing is that I'm looking at is the dollar. I think the dollar is really close to at least a digestive phase. That's really what I'm looking at. But I don't have any indication to say that the major top is in or anything like that yet. I'm going one step at a time. This is a weekly chart of the bond yields. So monthly time frame is going to be very important. I think you've covered almost every question that I got. Uh, there's one over here. Uh, yeah, I spoke about the VIX. Um, yeah, let's deal with the VIX again tomorrow. Let's see where it closes out today. Hey, folks, thanks for being a Stay tuned for your swim lesson. Today is Wednesday. We've got all these programs coming up. I uh, hope you have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Um, yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, I was just down 17 this speed time too. Let's see what up. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.